I'll show you how I made a rig that is simple, looks cool, and functions just right for small low-poly projects. I began by adding a bone in object mode, and then in edit mode, I added more bones for parts of the model that I wanted to articulate. So bones for each of the different parts of the body, and also bones for the flowy parts of her hair like the side bangs and the ponytail, and later some bones for her kimono as well. The plan is to add physics to these dynamic bones of the hair and kimono, but more on that some other time. I worked on one side of the body first, and named each bone accordingly with a dot l suffix. This is a very handy way to mirror your rig to the other side after you're done working on one side, and it saves quite a bit of time and effort. While rigging is generally a good idea to have a slight bend on the joints in the direction of their movement. This just ensures that the joints bend properly. I am going to add inverse kinematics and pull targets to the elbows and the knees to make sure they always bend properly, but this is still a good practice. If you really want to dive deep into rigging and thoroughly understand the process, I highly recommend this course by CG Dive on YouTube. It is free and it is very comprehensive. I'm not being paid to promote their work, I just really think it's an awesome resource and I'll leave links to it in the description if you're interested. After creating the bones, I moved on to adding inverse kinematics for the legs. Creating an IK setup is super simple and I'll walk you through it. First, extrude out a new bone from the foot or the end of your bone chain. This is the IK handle. Clear the bone's parents with Alt plus P and then create another bone from the knee joint. This is going to be the pole target and our joint is going to bend towards it. Drag it towards the direction you want your joint to bend and also clear its parents. We'll later parent this pole target to the foot IK bone. Oh, and also be sure to name these bones appropriately with the .l suffix and uncheck the deform option in the bone properties. These are our control bones and they are not going to directly deform our mesh. Next, in pose mode, I selected the foot IK bone, then shift selected the lower leg bone. And using control plus shift plus C, I added the IK constraint to the lower leg bone. In the constraint options, I set up the knee pull target and my leg IK was pretty much done. Next, I parented the main foot bone to the foot IK controller so that I could rotate the foot and move the leg with the same bone. I also added a copy locations constraint to the main foot to copy the location of the lower leg. This just ensures that it is not possible to detach the foot from the leg, which I would assume is pretty painful for our character. And this is pretty much the entire IK setup for the legs. After that, I moved on to creating the IK controller for the arms in the exact same way that I did for the legs. When I was happy with the rig, I symmetrized it in edit mode. This is super useful because it copies all the work you did on one side of the rig and mirrors it to the other side. It copies all your IK controllers, including your constraints and other properties, given that you named your bones appropriately with the .l suffix that I keep mentioning. Later in the process, I also added custom bone shapes, but before that, I had to rig the katana and the kimono as well. I moved on to rigging the katana next. This might seem a little intimidating at first, but it's actually quite simple. In edit mode of the rig, I added a new bone for the sheath of the katana and parented it to the main spine bone. And then I added another bone for the katana itself, and one more bone for attaching the katana to the hand. This last bone is where the katana should go when the character holds it in her hand. I parented this katana hand point bone to the character's hand bone so it moves along with the hand. The goal is to use bone constraints to control where the katana is attached. Doing it this way would hopefully make it really easy to attach the katana to the character's hand or to the sheath and also create attacking animations later if I wanted. So to implement the feature, in pose mode, I selected the bone for the katana and added a copy transforms bone constraint and selected the katana sheath bone in the constraint options. This will attach the katana to the sheath and it can't be moved by itself. Next, I added a second copy transforms constraint to the katana and this time I selected the katana hand point bone. 
Now, changing the influence on the constraints will move the katana to the hand of the character or to the sheath. This is a pretty useful trick and if you want to learn more about how this works, you can check out this video by Pierrick Picot where he shows a more professional way of doing the exact same thing. Once the rig features were complete, I just had to attach the katana object to the rig and the katana rig was mostly complete. From there, it was a little bit of adjustments to the constraint until it was just right. The last object remaining to be rigged was the kimono. The setup was again quite straightforward. I just added a few bones around the kimono, lining every bone with the edge loops around the kimono so that it would deform nicely when animating. This is what the bone setup looks like for the kimono. After all that rigging work, it was time to attach our model to the rig so that we can actually move it around. This was the point where I thanked myself for separating the parts of the model into different meshes, because this was going to make the weight painting process much less frustrating. I don't really have a streamlined workflow for weight painting, but the core concept is quite simple. In object mode, select the rig, then shift select the object you want to weight paint, go to weight paint mode, select the bone you want to influence the mesh or part of the mesh, and then paint it. That is literally it. You just have to do this part really well. You can also select the bone and move it around in weight paint mode to make sure that the mesh is deforming correctly, which is super helpful when weight painting. I painted the kimono as well, just like I did for the rest of the body, giving each bone influence over a specific part of the mesh, occasionally moving the bones around to make sure everything is deforming correctly. After I was done with weight painting, I fiddled around with the bones, posing the character differently and pushing everything to the extreme, just to make sure everything was properly rigged and weight painted. I wish I had more to tell you about the techniques and methods of weight painting, but honestly, I mostly had no idea what I was doing either, and this was one of those processes that really made me question my sanity, but the end result was quite satisfactory. Now let's move on to something a bit more… exciting. I added custom bone shapes to my rig just to make it a little easier to work with but it was mostly just a facade to make the rig look cooler and more professional. I just created a few custom shapes in object mode and then in pose mode of the rig I selected each bone and in the bone properties under custom shape I chose the shape I wanted for that particular bone and gave it a nice color as well. I added custom shapes for the hand and foot controls, as well as the pole targets, and some custom shapes for the katana controllers as well. These are the main bones I'll be moving around, so I made sure that these were easy to control. I realized I should have also made custom shapes for the torso and head bones, but I was happy with what I had so far. My rig was now looking pretty professional if I do say so myself, and I had all the features that I needed to work with. I was quite happy with how my baby was looking and I was really excited to begin animating her. Which you can watch maybe some other time. Ah, okay. Now you may be wondering how I created the character in the first place and if you are, be sure to check out this video to see her modeling process. I'll see you there.